familia Miranda here and welcome to another episode of First Viewing. So I do have a stack of movies here that I've been watching over the past couple weeks, uh, all first time watches. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my thoughts with you guys if I recommend them, if I don't. Uh, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So I'm gonna start off with the couple of DVDs that I watched. So first up we have Rumor Has It. I don't really know what to even call this. I really don't feel like this had like that rom-com material. Um, it's not really like full on romance, not really full on comedy or anything like that. Definitely not Jennifer Aniston's best performance. It was okay, but I don't know. There was just something missing in this film for me. Like I, I kind of wanted it to go a different way and I really didn't care for the way that it actually did play out. Um, uh, Mark Ruffalo, I loved him in this. Uh, I wish his role was kind of a bit bigger, you know, like better. Um, but you know, rumor has it, like I said, it was okay. Next is this film called Like Dandelion Dust. So this kind of gave me Losing Isaiah vibes. If you guys have ever seen that movie with Halle Berry, um, it's pretty much kind of like the same matter at hand, except for obviously, you know, Halle Berry's character in Losing Isaiah, she left her son somewhere and didn't remember where she left him and she was on drugs and all of that. Um, different kind of hard matter at hand here, but same kind of concept, if that makes any sense. But yeah, this, I really enjoyed this, you guys. It was a very heartbreaking film. And yes, by the end, I was total waterworks. Um, great performances, definitely throughout, um, but a very heartbreaking film, you guys, um, about this couple. Um, he went, so he was a wife beater, but he was like an alcoholic and stuff like that. Went away to prison and she found out like right after that she was pregnant, she was just in a bad place at the time. And so she put her son up for adoption. Uh, well, he gets out. Turns out he never signed the adoption papers. Somebody else in the prison did. And so they're fighting for their son. But, you know, things, you know, they're trying to get him back. They get to see their son again and everything. And it just didn't, let's just say things still weren't necessarily fixed between them. And so, you know, the, obviously the couple that has raised the boy for like the past six seven years um obviously you know they're fighting back they don't want to lose him and stuff like that so it's a really really good movie you guys but very heartbreaking and definitely you you'll need some tissues you guys trust me so like dandelion dust definitely you know if you're into these kind of movies definitely check it out but it is a sad one all right we have greta Whew! this film you guys oh my goodness crazy 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 um both uh isabel hupper which i'm not really familiar with her um uh, but chloe grace moritz uh i love her but both of them were absolutely fantastic in this film but she is just creepy psycho obsessive oh my goodness uh <laughs> wow that's all i can really say about this film is it is crazy you guys so definitely check it out highly recommend it next up we have lightyear I liked it, but I didn't quite love it. This film kind of was missing something for me. I mean, there's some great messages in this film about like family and, you know, home is where you make it kind of thing. And, um, and I'm about trusting others and stuff. So there's some really great messages behind this film for sure. But I don't know, there was just something missing in this film for me to just make it that like, wow, like this is a really good animated film. If anything, for me, the best part was Socks. I loved him, you guys. He was so cute, so funny. Um, but I mean, overall, it's a decent animated film. Um, definitely got to kind of see, you know, more about where Buzz came from and stuff like that. And, you know, his, you know, time as a space ranger and stuff like that. But yeah. It's good, but I didn't love it. Missing something for me personally. Um, let me know what you guys thought about this film. So next is The Vow. Um, it is inspired by a true story, which is pretty cool. Um, but honestly, I wanted to like this film more. Um, but there was just, I don't know, from what I had read on the back of this film, it just made it sound kind of more intense, more like hardcore, I'm gonna make her fall in love with me again kind of thing. But I just didn't really feel 
like a very good chemistry between the two and I just feel like neither of the characters really put in that like 100% effort into you know trying to get things back to normal again and make her remember because she's in a they're in a car accident and she comes out that she can't remember the past like five years of her life and stuff like that and so him he's trying to make her fall in love with him again um, because he is her husband and stuff but yeah I just don't really feel like they really put themselves that much to uh help each other out to you know get her memory back or anything like that so yeah i wanted to like this one more it was okay for what it is um but i just i did i wanted to like this one more but it, it, there was just i don't know there's just so much kind of missing for me from this film to just make it that kind of amazing you know film i mean it definitely has this like heartwarming moments and stuff but yeah, The Vow, um, you know, if you're into the whole kind of films like this, I'd say check it out. But for me personally, uh, this might be a one-time watch. So next we have That Awkward Moment. So this was a film that, you know, I'd kind of seen in bits and pieces, finally decided to fully watch it through. And it is a blast, you guys. It is so, so funny. There's some really great moments in this film, some really great comedic moments. And uh, the three of them together, they were great. And uh, Emojin Poots was a nice addition to this film. She really helped bring this film to life. And it, it is, it's just a really great comedy flick. Uh, so I'd say definitely check this one out if you're looking for some good laughs. So next film I have here is The Game. I cannot recommend this movie enough. This was freaking awesome. Excellent performance from Michael Douglas. Um, but yes, this movie, it slowly grows in intensity. And it's just kind of like twist after twist after twist. And just when you think that, or at least when I thought it was going to be done, no. Um, it is just a fun, fun film, you guys. It's a fun concept. And that would totally be crazy if something like this actually like existed. Because honestly, yeah, people could definitely use the excitement in their lives sometimes, you know. But uh, yeah, this was kind of a, a crazy watch, you guys. But I really, really enjoyed this one. Highly recommend it if you have not seen it. Next up, we have The Art of Racing in the Rain. This is a fantastic film, you guys. Very heartwarming, but very, very heartbreaking film. Um, basically, you know, it opens with the ending pretty much, kind of. Um, but obviously, you know, the dog over the years, he's getting old and stuff, and you know that moment's gonna come. And even though you don't really actually see it happen, it just kind of like wrecks you, man. Um, Amanda Seyfried in this film, I will say, even though her role was very short-lived, she was really, really good, you guys. I thought she was just fantastic in this. Um, but it is a sweet film, but again, very heartbreaking. And it's not just, you know, heartbreaking about the dog. There's other matters that happen in this film that are heartbreaking, obviously. But that very, very ending, oh my goodness, that just completely wrecked me, you guys. I was freaking total waterworks. I mean, you know, throughout the movie, there was moments I was like, you know, you know, crying my eyes out and stuff. But that ending, the ending alone just did it for me. I just, I couldn't stop crying. Like, even after the movie was over, I was still freaking crying, you guys. So um, The Art of Racing in the Rain, highly recommend this one. Okay, so first time watching Insidious. I don't know why. I kind of always try to stay away from these films because normally I'm not really into this type of horror. And honestly, uh, I guess I can kind of see why. <laughs> this movie freaked the heck out of me. I There are some really good jump scares in here, you guys. And that demon dude, whatever, like I could not bear to like look at him. He was scary. <laughs> I don't know what it was about his face and everything that it was just so freaking scary but there like I said there's some really really good jump scares in here it's a good storyline too I really enjoyed this um even though it scared the heck out of me which honestly that really hasn't happened a lot lately uh with like horror films and stuff like that I don't find myself getting scared but this one this one scared me you guys so I will definitely have to check out all the other films in the franchise um to see but yeah insidious you guys if you're looking for a good scare definitely this one and the whole kind of like astral projection concept is actually quite fun and quite interesting and it was done very very well in this film so insidious yeah 
All right, next up we have Frida. Shout out to Della Movies. He actually showed this in a recent video of his and it reminded me that I had not seen this film and that I really need to get on it because I mean, it's Salma Hayek, so yeah. Uh, I can't stress enough how amazing she was in this film, you guys. She is the most perfect Frida. They could not have picked a better person to portray her. And I really, really love this film, you guys. Um, so, you know, like in school, they kind of mention, you know, Frida and Diego Rivera and stuff like that. They show you their most like iconic paintings and stuff and whatnot. And yeah, but you don't really learn much about them. So this film is a very, very good insight to who Frida Kahlo was, um, not just as an artist, but like as a person and even just more of her artwork. It was so cool to see all of the unique paintings that she did. Um, yeah, it was just so, so cool, you guys. Um, Cause it's definitely ones that I'd never seen before and her style of painting was just so unique. Um, just one of a kind and yeah, she definitely went through a lot. She suffered like this crazy accident and everything. And it, it was cool because you definitely get to see a lot of Diego Rivera in here too. And kind of their relationship, even though I'd say it was kind of a pretty like fucked up relationship, you know, um, lots of betrayal and stuff. But it was like at the end of the day, they still like complimented each other very well. And like they needed each other. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, their relationship was just kind of really messed up, you guys. But definitely a very good insight to Frida, uh, you know, who she was as a person, as a painter, as an artist. So definitely highly recommend this one and uh, just an outstanding performance from Frida for, well, Salma Hayek. <laughs> so, but yeah, she, great portrayal. All right, next up we have Whiplash. I don't know what took me so long to watch this movie. Um, but I'm glad that I finally did and I freaking loved it. This is one of those films that I can easily say I immediately fell in love with. Oh my gosh, it is intense. Uh, but Miles Teller, man, I'm normally not a huge fan of his. I really don't care much for a lot of things that I've seen him in, but Whiplash is easily his best performance yet. Um, this is just, oh my gosh. <laughs> so damn good uh miles teller jk simmons both are freaking amazing in this film um it's just so crazy the whole like drumming acts and everything it's just so badass and it's so cool to hear and everything and like jk simmons even though he plays this really kind of asshole of a teacher uh he was still kind of likable you know um i get i mean obviously you know, teachers can't treat their students like that, but I get kind of where he was coming from. You know, he just, he sees potential in people and, you know, he wants them to reach that full potential. And so if that means going all out hardcore, pushing them to the limit uh, until their fingers bleed and stuff, like, yeah, man. But definitely intense film. And that last, like, number, like, that last set was just was amazing it was epic you guys so oh my gosh whiplash y'all need to check this one out if you haven't all right got a couple more films so this one here fortress honestly you guys i have to say this was going to be a one-time watch for me i really didn't care too much for it um the storyline is okay but i felt like everything that happened in this film was too easy um you know and the action wasn't really all that great i'd say um, but yeah, everything just kind of happened too easily in this film. So, um, and I just really didn't care for like any of the characters at all. So Fortress, um, yeah, I don't recommend this one. All right. Last but not least, we have Foxcatcher. This film, well, Steve Carell's character in this one, he's kind of weird. He's just an odd character. Um, it is a very, very slow burn, you guys. And, um, I don't know. I know this is kind of like, you know, the wrestling that you see like in high school and stuff like that. Um, it's not like, you know, WWE, WWF, whatever, it, whatever it's called now, I forget. But um, it's not like that kind of wrestling, you know. So um, it was interesting, but I don't know. Nothing in this film really wowed me. Um, it is based on a true story, which, like I said, hit Steve Carell's character, which in here, he's like almost unrecognizable. Um, he was just a really weird guy. 
and just the way things played out and how it ended was just kind of crazy like yeah he was definitely something was wrong with him um but yeah I don't really feel like you know Channing Tatum or Mark Ruffalo's characters really shined in this or anything um but yeah I like I said I don't know I'm gonna have to give this one another watch to really see how I kind of feel about this one because I'm on the fence about this I don't know whether I really liked it or if I just didn't even like it at all it's just I don't know there like there's some good elements to the film for sure but there's just kind of something still missing there for me um so yeah I'm gonna have to give it a second watch and see what I think second time around um but yeah it was definitely not exactly what I was expecting and I wasn't expecting it either to be a slow burn so that kind of uh you know pulled away from the film for me um but yeah Foxcatcher uh let me know if you guys have seen this what your thoughts are on it so that is all of the titles that I have to share with you today. Thank you so, so much for watching. Join the family if you have not, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.